Sonos got a new tune and we're talking competitive balance changes. Welcome to the Patch Rundown. Hey guys, Miss Pudding here. This patch is one of the last we've got leading to the World Championships, so we're making a ton of changes aimed at promoting competitive diversity. Though we're tweaking things for every role, on today's panel we're only going to be talking about Sona, aggressive junglers, and assassins. I'll start with a mini summary of those changes before jumping into a more in-depth discussion with our designers and experts. If you want to skip to one of those topics, mouse over and click it. Kate, specifics. Sona's got a gameplay update. No worries, her playstyle's not really changed, but now she's giving bigger buffs over less time. Also, instead of being a floating stat booster, Q, W, and E are more impactful, so maybe the good Sonas will be recognized for something other than a single flash crescendo. Though tanky junglers and jungle items got buffed in 4.11, they're more aggressive friends. Elise, Evelyn, Lee Sin are still too dominant, and they're bullying everyone else out of champ select. All three are getting changes, with Elise losing range on her initiation, Lee losing his attack speed slow, and Evelyn getting a small power shift to the late game. Assassins are going to be happy about these 413 changes. Exhaust doesn't shut down your damage as much. Banshee's Veil has a longer reset on the spell shield, and Chalice gives just a bit less MR. On the other hand, there is a DFG nerf, with that cooldown going up. We'll talk about this and all of the above in our upcoming panel. Finally, there's a ton more I haven't mentioned, so definitely check out the patch notes for additional changes and details. To talk about the updates for this week's patch, I'm joined by Scara from Team Dignitas, Zadik from Core Gameplay, and Fearless from the Champion Updates team. Hey guys, thanks for coming out. Hey, no problem. So I'd like to start with Sona, who got a pretty big update with this patch. Yeah. What were we going for with the shift in her gameplay? We wanted to move her out of the invisible power stat auras and into something where she creates gameplay when she uses her abilities. Um, a big problem of the, the stat auras has always been that the amount of power they need to feel satisfying is too much power for the game to support her to be healthy. And, and just for clarity, that's like when she uses her W and then she's standing around and there's kind of a passive like armor. And there's just all this armor and MR, but the amount that you need to feel really good about it is so much that it's just a terrifying amount of gold to kind of give out to your whole team. Um, so what we've tried to do is condense the effects into, one, much smaller auras so that Sona actually interacts with her lane a whole lot more, but also the bonuses she gives are temporary but have really high impact when she gives them so that the decision-making in Sona will also have a lot more importance. We wanted to make Sona have more power when she does Sona things. So crucial timing, better positioning. All those sorts and of things that no she was already no more doing. passive bonus. Right, originally when I first read, like, found out about it, I thought it was just they would shift away the aura power to make it stronger nearby because they reduced the radius from 1,000 to like 500. But when I kept reading, like, or when I was told, is that they actually don't have any invisible, invisible power anymore, which I think is actually kind of interesting. I think that um, it might be a little bit bad because she's actually at a really good power level, at least in terms of competitively yeah, right now. True. Like she kind of fills in the whole of like lane bully with Nami. She mm. also can heal. She, she does a lot for her specific role. But um, this now shift in power may make her even more dominant in lane. Um, uh, at the expense of her being a positioning reliant, which I think is nice. Yeah. Like I think it's really cool to have interactive things where you're required to be at a good position at a good time to get like great benefit for it. And while we are talking about a full gameplay update, one thing is one of the big focuses on this update was making sure Sona still really felt like Sona. Mm -hmm. uh, so even if you didn't read the patch notes, you didn't see what was new, you'd figure it out really fast because your Q is still going to be shooting out the bolts. It's still going to be nuking people down. Uh, the W actually heals more uh, for injured allies, so she'll be doing less of the really maintenance-oriented topping people off and has some power to make some really clutch heals. So I mean, she's still, I think, going to have some of that really strong landing pattern. Uh, now, she, I mean, one of the cool things now is that second auto attack, or the auto attack right after her Q cast, instead of just kind of whittling you down with a little bit of bonus AD, it's a noticeable proc that both your allies should maybe yeah. capitalize on, Sone will have to capitalize on, and your enemies actually realize why they're getting chunked instead of just like, this hurts four AD more. Yeah, um, yeah. 
they actually see like, oh, that was a laser that shot shot at a Sona. That probably seems pretty bad. To be clear, like she still has the heal from long range. I don't think we changed yeah. the yeah. heal no, range. Right. So she still, even if she's in the back, she can still heal the front the front line. Um, but to get the extra bonus, the shield, you're gonna have to go up. And I think sometimes you have to make hard decisions. Sometimes you'll make the wrong decision, go in and then die. But like that's just kind of League of Legends, I think. Um, last thing about it though, I did want to ask about the ultimate because we we switch up the VFX and it looks really different in width. Did we actually change that? Yeah, no, so the gameplay functionality of the ult is completely unchanged. It's the exact same width, speed, everything. I did not touch that. What we did change is we got some really gorgeous new particles that... By the way, the art team was like, did such an amazing job on the character. I think she looks really awesome. Everyone involved with the art just did a tremendous amount of really cool stuff. And Crescendo especially. Crescendo just flat out lied before. Like yeah, it, it was, was gigantic yeah, on and the screen. It, so it felt like you missed a whole lot. And we wanted to fix that. Players deserve to know what their ults do. Mm -hmm. um, so the new crescendo is much more honest about how it functions. It actually shows its projectile, which it's a projectile, everybody. Uh, <laughs> and then it also shows just how big the affected area is um, while still looking like that huge high moment. So when you make every person on the enemy team dance, which they dance slightly faster now, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> It's important. Very this important. is important, all right? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah. But now you'll really, you'll still have that huge high moment when you make them dance, but you'll know who you're actually going to hit. Okay, so the theme of this patch is supposed to be increasing competitive diversity, I assume, mm -hmm. in champion picks. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of the changes focused on the top three junglers right now Evelyn, Elise, Lee Sin. Why are we targeting them? It's hard to say that we just only targeted them. Before this patch, obviously, we were doing a lot of changes. Like, we added Quill Coat, and we wanted to bring back tank junglers, you know? Um, and we've seen a lot of success in, in a lot of levels of play with these characters, like, you know, Maokai and Nautilus and Ramis and Amumu, whatever, um, are definitely, like, pretty prominent in, in a lot of levels of play. But at the competitive scene, we're still seeing a lot of just, you know, early skirmish duelist guys, Lee Sin, Elise, Evelyn. Like, these are the guys that we see, like, every game we're like, hey, what's going on? You know, like, we, we wanted to try to, like, attack it from a different direction, but um, honestly, at some point, you have to realize that these guys are kind of drowning out the, the other possible picks. Uh, the first thing I have, in, I have in mind is, like, what was the idea behind not nerfing uh, any of the early damage, or any of the damage in general from a lease or lease in. Because mm -hmm. like you said, uh, a lot of the reason why they're popular right now is because they're skirmish junglers. Like, they do a lot of damage early game and throughout the game. So uh, so why was the balance changes not focused on the damage portion? Right. I mean, wh whenever we make a change to a character, we want to make sure we're not removing something players love about the character or, or really play them for, which is, I feel like, Lee Sin and Elise are, are largely defined by their ability to, to duel and have damage early. You could argue maybe there's too much there, okay. um, but we would we prefer to like look at other options, and I think we, we did this time around. Okay, um, on Lee Sin, I saw that you took off the attack speed for Tempest. Uh, that was very crucial in late game team fights, like early game skirmishing as well as, why was it the decision to completely remove it and not lower it to like, a, let's say a flat rate on every level? Yeah, I mean, we actually, uh, I mean, to just tell you guys about the change, um, we think that the attack speed slow is also something that is really strong late game. I mean, it basically shuts out an AD carry. And we've kind of been going with this philosophy of Lee Sin is like, he's an early game champion. He focuses on trying to snowball the game out. Um, and, and having that utility, we're like, well, one, players probably don't appreciate it as much, but also like, it's just really powerful. And we think he needs some late game fall off. Okay, that, that um, but yeah, we did try a version where it was 20% um, attack speed slow at all ranks. Um, at the end of the day, we said it, it just didn't feel like it was noticeable, and we were like, "Hey, can we just make it cleaner? Can we make it less complex? Can we cut it out and then see if we, you know, if, if Lisa needed something else, we can maybe." look at other parts of his kit and, and, and give it to there. Okay, well that makes sense. Uh, I really like what you guys did with Elise repel range. I feel like there's no reason for a champion to have a 1,000 range gap close in the first place. And just it nerfing- 1,000, huh? It, yeah, yeah it's something crazy so like that. Crazy. Ner nerfing the range on that was really uh, vital to be able to stop her like insane gank potential and uh, all that stuff. And I think the width uh, decrease on her E is actually pretty significant. I'm not sure how big that would be until I see it in game, but it's already a skill shot that's missed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, nerfing it by like, I think 20% almost on the terms of uh, the width is gonna right. be huge in actually ha seeing people hit it or not. Yeah, I mean, our, our goals are just, hey, we feel like Elise has a bit too much reliability when she goes in, she can basically get to any target she wants. and. Cocoon is, is on, like, yes, it's, right. it's sometimes hard to hit, but the cooldown's really low. Like, you get to shoot that out a lot. Well, right? So, I mean, like, if she repels right onto you and she does a point blank cocoon, right. are, there's like, going to be less of a chance of she'll hit you. Right. right. So. And, and I guess the last thing I really want to bring up is, like, what do you, what's the initial uh, thoughts on 
the fact that you nerf these three ch champions, that other champions will come up in their wake. Like, for instance, right now, I feel like Eve isn't even part of the Holy Trinity. Like, there isn't a Trinity right now. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, just, uh, or I if there is a Trinity, Rengar is right. actually the third best champion. Like, mm -hmm. Eve's kind of fallen off recently, yeah. and Rengar's replaced uh, Eve as a more reliable initiation against the current uh, uh, meta pokey mids, and he's just one of the most reliable forms of initiation in the game. Uh, I, I really feel like his, like Rengar is so strong and has ulti cooldown is really, really low, mm -hmm. and he essentially functions as a, a superior version of Nocturne. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, what are your general thoughts about that? I mean, it, it's hard for us to, to like predict everything that's gonna happen, right? Um, obviously we saw some problems with Evelyn that we just didn't like. Like she rushes Randuin's like really quickly in the game, which is really odd for us. We think she's more of a squishy type champion. She's like an assassin-like champion. Um, she should be building more aggressively, which is what I think the changes reflect. Um, as far as Rengar goes, like, I think there's obviously still maybe some work we need to do on the character, um, but he's someone who's who's rising right now. And I think we want to give it just a little bit of time to see, like, understand what is his patterns, what's going on, why is he so dominant if he is. Um, but you know, going in there and, and changing him before we understand that, I think is is maybe a little bit, um, you know, it's just it's just happening too fast. Okay. I think. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and move on to assassins. Uh, we haven't been seeing a lot of them lately, and especially in mid lane, we've been seeing a lot of long-range mages with a lot of wave clear. Do you think that's a problem with mages just being too strong right now, or assassins not really having a lot of uh, strengths? I mean, I think it's it's an, um, it's like an amalgamation of everything we've done in the last you know couple patches, or maybe even just this entire season. Um, we've been looking to make healthier assassin play. Um, in a lot of cases, that did nerf the power of those characters because they became less reliable and just weren't as consistent um, of assassins. Um, and also we've done changes like we've buffed exhaust, we buffed heal, mm -hmm. a lot of things that counter those characters who need to go in and do the, the, you know, the burst. And if they can't get that done, then they're not as useful. So, um, you know, I think it's a combination of them maybe being, like some of them being slightly weak, some of the, some of the game just not favoring what we've done. Um, so yeah. Uh, I really think the uh, the start of the exhaust change really shut down a lot of assassins because fifty percent damage reduction is like ridiculous for them to go yeah, through. Yeah, just cuts them in half. It's hard to understand though because it's like only ten more percent than it than it used to be, right? But like that, that's a lot apparently. Right, and so the new the new uh, change to exhaust, like shifting ten percent less, uh, is going to help at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. But another big thing is just the fact that like the the meta kind of shifted to where a lot of people group up more and more. Like you're, it's very hard for for you to find those meaningful early snowballs as assassins outside of like maybe solo kills in your lane or like when the jungler comes a gank and you get like a 2v2 skirmish and you get ahead. Uh, so it's really hard for you to to get like these kind of picks and create like pick comps around assassins. Mm -hmm. Generally right now you'll see a lot more team based like death ball style like 5v full 5v5 team fights. Assassins, death death ball. Ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> assassins tend to really underperform in, in situations where it's like full 5v5s unless they're very very farmed. Also uh, the item changes uh, to banshees and chalice, how are those actually benefiting assassins exactly? Right now, it's like you would poke down a Banshee's Veil and like, and then it's back honestly, up just back up before you can do anything. So the idea behind that change is just like, maybe we can open up a slight window where, you know, assassin can catch someone out or maybe they pick him off with a CC and then the assassin goes in or something like that. So maybe it can help them there. I think it helps just everyone play against Banshee's Veil and like kind of totally kind of compositions. Well, but there's an interaction point of like, right. an assassin generally has to commit for their kill. Mm -hmm. If they lose a spell... It's pretty much over. Right, like they've lost out yeah. a tremendous amount of that fight. When, a, when Ziggs throws out a Q and it hits a Banshee's Veil, he's waiting for a couple of seconds and then doing his whole thing again. Mm -hmm. So I feel like giving them more time to capitalize on when someone is actually vulnerable could be a huge improvement, or uh, it's a big improvement. It definitely will be for the competitive scene because Banshee's right now is used as like a fail safe. It, it's like really helpful in like sieges. Uh, it's really hard to dive anyone with Banshee's right now. And since the cooldown is so short, you could pretty much get it re recharged on every creep wave. And that's, that's yeah, that was kind of the tuning point there. Yeah, there's really not much counterplay when you can literally just pull back if your Banshee's gets popped, wait for the next creep wave and, and try something else again. Yeah, so that's stalling out games a lot with that. Yeah. As far as the chalice change goes, I mean, it, it, we're just reducing some of the MR on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just kind of a bit too gold efficient for the item. You're buying it, you should be buying it for the mana regeneration. Um, it'll make them a little bit more vulnerable to magic damage. Um, I don't think it'll have a huge effect, but it'll have some effect. So with these item changes meant to benefit assassins, why did we then decide to uh, r raise the cooldown on DFG so significantly? It seems like kind of an yeah. opposite. It's, it's, it's definitely something that can look very confusing. Um, but the, the idea is 
we love assassins. Specifically, like we said, we want to make healthy assassins. We want to make assassins that we think are good for the game, um, that allow people who are being assassinated to have actions and reactions against them. So what would you consider an unhealthy assassin in that sense? Um, a lot of the characters that do use DFG uh, are often using DFG to amplify you know, an unhealthy pattern, essentially. Uh, unhealthy, unhealthy pattern is one that's like very fast, very uh, reliable. Basically, DFG, you just click the guy, right? And he has no way to do anything against it. Um, you're just in range of the character. Um, and then they follow with as many spells as they can in that instant um, to just try to one-shot you before so you can do anything. So full combo from right. 100 to um, zero I think because of DFG. Assassins should have, should, like, can be able to do you know, these big burst combos, but you know, things like skill shots or things like things that I can dodge, things that I can react to are important. You know? uh, I think Zed's death mark is actually really cool because you can barrier it, you can do things like that. He doesn't just instantly kill you, even though he deals a ton of damage. You know? Okay, thank you Skara, Static, and Fearless for joining us today. If you guys are looking for more information, please check out the patch notes. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, but until then, check out the link below and leave us your comments and questions. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.